We're here at StoreStack in Toronto and we're gonna find out how they use and modify shipping containers as alternative building blocks. They've worked on some really interesting projects building homes, additions, cottage bunkies, man caves, mobile offices, and a ton more. So we're gonna go meet up with Anthony to find out more. I love modernist building. I love modern architecture and the square boxes fit right into that. A good paint job on them stands out. It lasts for years. It's durable and it's just a solid building. They're also great because you can move them. So a shipping container is basically a standardized steel box that allows you to ship anything anywhere in the world. Typical dimensions are 20 and 40 feet, but there are a number of specialty containers. So you can go with a 10 foot container you can go with a 45 foot, 48, and 53. Containers are made out of something called Corten steel. So Corten steel is a weathering steel. When you see rust on a container, it's not traditional rust that you'd see on mild steel. It's actually creating a protective patina, a barrier that protects the steel underneath. That's what allows it to put it on a ship and not have it rot away from all the seawater. So my number one favorite is definitely the New Old Stock Man Caves. In conjunction with Jason Halter and the guys at New Old Stock, we built two ultra high-end, super luxurious man caves that are currently in Los Angeles. They're in downtown LA. They featured everything from Spanish cedar, Calcutta marble, shower, off-grid water, solar panels. Harlem House is another great one. It is the first container extension in Toronto. The idea of integrating the container with the traditional build, the end result, it's gonna be an awesome fusion of the two. Rogers is another favorite. The Rogers shipping container fan hub that we built features three containers on the bottom, full open concept, one container on top cantilever 10 feet over the right side, and then a full 740 square foot uh, patio deck. Another favorite is the 10-foot container bunkie that we built for a client of ours up in, of all places, tiny Ontario. <laughs> so it was literally a tiny 10-foot container, which is 10 by 8, 80 square feet. It's fully insulated, finished. It's got a beautiful glass sliding door on it. All shipping containers come from China. You may find people like us that can build them locally, but for cost sake, you bring them all in from China, new or used. So used containers usually have a 10 to 20 year life being used for shipping uh, goods around the world. So trains, planes, automobiles on trucks, they go anywhere and everywhere. Uh, new containers are built in China. They're loaded once. They're brought to their destination, unloaded, and then their intent is to be sold, okay. either for storage, modification, or anything else that you can do with them. We'll use used and new containers for modification, as you can see behind me, yeah. uh, depending on the application. So a used container is great for uh, simple storage on site. If you wanna throw some roll-up doors or use it as is and store goods inside, mm -hmm. uh, great for used containers. Yeah. You wanna use more of the new containers for things like housing, uh, for food, serving, or retail purposes, mm -hmm. you always want to use new because a used container, you'll never know what was inside of it. Mm -hmm. There is no manifest that you can find on that container okay. because each shipper mm -hmm. puts their own goods inside and then somebody else will ship something else in it. Okay. So you can ship anything from baby products, clothing, mm -hmm. right up to nuclear waste inside of a container, which I've actually seen that before, the nuclear waste. If we're doing a container modification, there's a few, I guess, steps that you can take to modify it. First, we'll cut all of our openings. That'll be for doors, windows, vents, louvers. They're then framed with steel. Once the opening is framed, we go to the inside of the container. We'll do all of the interior framing if we're doing walls and ceilings. You'll do an electrical rough-in. We'll get all the rough-in work done. Then it goes over to our paint shop. Then it comes back into the shop, and that's when you do all the final finishing. It follows the same type of building that a traditional build will take, except we're not using stick build, we're using containers. Containers are, are great for a number of reasons. It's something that we can do off-site and then deliver to site complete. Typically, you'll go overnight, you'll have a foundation, 
and then the next day you'll have the structure complete. So it's great for that instant deployability. Durability is another thing that's great for the housing and the bunky sector because it's a steel box. So you don't have to worry about wood rotting or the weather conditions. Doing a container home or bunky, if you're going for permitting, it is the exact same way that you would do a traditional building. So you approach an architect, he does drawings. Once the drawings are done, you then approach the city. The city reviews the drawings, make sure everything meets Ontario building code. If it does, they give you the stamp of approval and you can begin construction. If it doesn't, they may make you do some revisions and resubmit, or they may tell you you can't do it at all, depending on the project. Some challenges are they're not the most do-it-yourself friendly uh, builds because there is a lot of steel work involved, at least on the exterior of the structure. So whenever you want to put a door or window, if you can't weld or you haven't worked with steel before, it's difficult to do. It's a lot different than working with wood. But other than that, the only other thing is if other people, mainly neighbors, don't like the look of containers. But if it's done right, they'll love what you do as long as you, you make it look good. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of our favorite alternative spaces, you can click right here. We made a playlist. Click right here to subscribe to our channel. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date on what we're doing. Thanks and see you in the next video.